So today I've got a dental appointment in Coralejo with a German dentist. More about that later. So we're going to drive into Coralejo along the FV1, which is the main road from Puerto Rosario along the beachfront, all the way through the National Park, the Park Natural of Coralejo, which is a nature preserve of over 2,600 hectares, consisting of beautiful beaches and turquoise seas. It's really lovely. I've been coming here since 1990, and this hasn't changed. It's still stunningly beautiful, very barren, wild, and lovely. What has changed are the towns, of course. I don't think Caleta di Fuste was anything like it is today, and indeed Coralejo was just a tiny fishing village with two or three restaurants. That's all. That fishing village, of course, is still there, but now it's surrounded by lots more restaurants and bars, music square, the high street with all the shops and restaurants. It's totally different, but it's still a beautiful place to come for your holidays or to live. Stay with me, enjoy the drive. It's beautiful. It's a lovely sunny day, 26 degrees. Today we're driving along the seafront all the way into Coralejo. We're going to have a look at what's open in terms of shops and restaurants so that we can give you a bit of an update of what's going on there. So please keep watching. Don't forget to subscribe on the red button below. Thumbs ups are always nice as well and I'm more than happy to read your comments and respond if you've got any questions or any comments at all. So in the far distance you can see the island of Lanzarote and in the near distance you can see the island of Los Lobos. So now we're driving past the commercial centre El Campanario, named after the huge bell tower. You can see it for miles, so you can't miss this shopping centre. If you go to the top of the bell tower, there's a great view of Coralejo out towards the sea. There's lots of nice shops in there, bars and restaurants, and they're all mainly open again now. And according to the website, the weekly farmer's market has returned, that's on Saturdays, and the craft market on Sundays. The craft market is a really popular market with some nice unusual stalls selling lots of homemade items. There's also a big hippodino in this shopping centre. There's a really big underground car park which is a good place to park to keep your car cool. There's always lots of room in it and there's a lift to all the floors. From the Campanario centre there's a walkway or a cycle track along both sides of the road leading into town usually quite busy with people walking, especially early evening when it's nice and cool. And you can walk all the way into Coralejo from the Campanaria Centre along this path. At the end of this street on the left, there's a twice weekly market at the water park from 9 till 2 on Tuesdays and Fridays. It's usually quite busy and it's full of stalls selling designer in inverted commas, handbags, t-shirts and sunglasses, as well as other items of clothing. There doesn't seem to be much open yet at the top of the strip, but please don't hesitate to correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. Along the strip itself, on the right hand side, you've got Bershka and inside the clothing shops, both now fully open. Burger King is open. And on the left, you've got Zara and Mango, both open now, as is Esprit. And upstairs, unfortunately, Tuxedo is closing, which is quite sad. First, I'm going to have a look at what's open in Las Palmeras. Looks like most of it's open now. Calcedonia, Mango Man, Women's Secret, Stradivarius, Zara Kids. Obviously the spa supermarket, but that's always been open. And that huge shoe and handbag place, whose name I've never been able to pronounce, Fund Gruber which apparently means treasure trove in German. Downstairs, it's all open, Sunglass Hut, the pizza place, the sports shops. Burger King looks like it's open now. It was open during the crisis, but only for drive throughs so you could still get your burger and your ice creams. But now it looks like you can eat inside as well. Fifth Avenue is closed. The small Hippodino is still closed. 
Natura is open. There's lots more people out walking now in the sunshine, which is nice to see. Some people are wearing masks, some are not. You do have to wear a mask if you want to go into any of the shops though. And you'll also find hand sanitizer dispenser at the entrance of the shop, which you are obliged to use before you go in. You also have to wear a mask if you can't keep more than 1.5 metres away from other people, but that's really not much of a problem here with all this wide open space. So the Asia Garden looks closed, the Plaza Shopping Centre and Food Centre is all closed up and cordoned off. Poco Loco is closed, Don Pepe is closed. The authentic yoghurt, frozen yoghurt shop is open. Sabina is closed. Dewey Shoe Shop looks like it's just opening up. But it's a little bit hard to tell during the day as some of these places might only be open at night. So I don't want to mislead anyone or give false information so I'm going to come back probably tomorrow night, Friday night, and have a look round and see what's open in the evening. I took you in a British food shop in uh, Coletta last week, and now I want to introduce you to one of my favourite shops in Corralejo. When I first came here, I found it really hard to find spices and things to make curry, Thai curry or Indian curry, and this is where I come to get all that kind of stuff. Please don't forget to let me have your comments below and give me a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing. Also, please subscribe on the red button below. This shop basically supplies every oriental food you could need. All the Mrs. Patak sauces, poppadoms, every spice you can imagine, and even stuff to make sushi with. I'm just trying to give you a feel for what is and isn't open here, and as I said earlier, I will come back in on Friday night to see what's open in the evening. I'm not trying to be the fount of all knowledge here, I'm just trying to give people a general idea of what is open, so please don't hesitate to put a comment below if you have any other main information that I haven't shared. And I will put a full list in the description that goes along with this video, and also at the end of the video I will show you what is open on a Friday night in town. I'm just going to walk back up to the plaza centre as when I drove past it was quite hard to see what was open in there, although it looked like it was all cordoned off. Uh, in there we have the famous Seven Pints, there's the Wok Fantastic Chinese Buffet, there's a Mexican, an Indian, an Italian and a tapas bar. You can see that it's all closed up and cordoned off, so I guess nothing in there is open for the moment. Stay tuned to the end and I'll tell you about my very favourite restaurant in Coralejo. There's lots more cafes now open up on the pedestrianised bit of the main strip. Lots of people sitting outside drinking coffee in the sunshine which is lovely to see after having seen them so empty for so long. As you can see there's a lot more open in town and there's more people around walking around in the sunshine. So it's generally all opening up again, and I'm sure as the weeks go on, things will be more open. Just walking down the little side street now, at the side of the Coralejo Hotel, and the two little cafe bars down there are both open. I'm now walking down the little side street that leads to the seafront and Sereni Beach, and to one of my favourite cafe bars. Eat Cafe 2011, which is right on the beach and is owned by a lovely Dutch guy and his daughter. And they do great snacks and a fantastic cup of coffee. It's a really lovely, clean beach here with beautiful, soft white sand, and the sea is very clean and usually doesn't have any seaweed in, unlike some of the other beaches. Here we are, it's Friday evening and as promised I've come back to check out which restaurants are open in the evening to give you a better overview of what's open. Okay, so past Aberdeen Steakhouse, which is closed, 
and on to Music Square, as we Brits like to call it. No music tonight, though, and not a great deal open. Hamburghese, the amazing burger bar, is closed. Shaker's Cocktail Bar and Gin Corner are open. Then on from Music Square into Calle La Iglesia, the cute little Italian restaurant Pasqualina is closed, as is Tio Barnaby. So continuing into Calle Iglesia, which is one of my favourite spots in the evening because it's nicely protected from the windy parts of Corralejo. There's lots of bars down here. It's usually quite nice and lively. It's early evening now, so it's starting to get busy. And it looks like it's going to be a good night out here with lots of the bars now open. So this really is just one long street with bars and restaurants down both sides. And as we get down to the bottom, we can see that there are more bars open. And down the side streets leading off there, down to the seafront, there are more bars and restaurants open now. Blanco Cafe is a really nice bar. It's got outside seating, but it's also got some lovely chilled inside seating with some really romantic lighting. And they play some really cool music later on at night. It's usually open till quite late. It is just an overview, so I apologise in advance if I've missed anything out, but I will put a full list of what is open and closed in terms of restaurants and shops in the description. Walking down Cali La Nina now, we can see that Tanta Luna is still closed. That's an amazing restaurant if you haven't yet tried it. They've got some really unusual things on the menu. When Onda Bar is open down there, and now we're going to head down to the seafront. And there's a new Italian looking place called Pepperoncino, advertising fish, seafood, steak, pasta, and pizza, so basically everything. So continuing along the Avenida Maritima, or the Seafront Walk, we can see that quite a lot of the restaurants are still closed, in fact most of them, but I suppose when you consider that this is the main area that the tourists come, that's quite natural. I spoke to a few of the restaurant owners who seem to be getting ready, and they say that they're going to be opening in July, so that's really not very long off, another week or so now, that's all. Please don't forget to let me have your comments below and thumbs ups are always nice if you like what I'm doing and also please don't forget to subscribe in the red button below. Now you might think there's not much happening along the Avenida Maritima but bear with me, wait till we get to the other end and you will see that the place is absolutely rocking especially if we go to some of the back streets as well and we'll show you what nightlife is like at the moment. Looking across the empty beach in the distance you can see the Avanti Hotel with the evening sun shining on it. That's still closed at the moment, as is the restaurant below it, the Rompiolas. I think hotel dates are changing all the time at the moment, so the most up-to-date information comes from the Tourist Information Office, so probably check with them if you're wondering what hotels are open at the moment. Just passing the best tapas bar in town on Cali del Fin which has been open for quite a while now. They serve tapas during the day and in the evening and they do an amazing sangria by the glass. And of course Cantanti Bar, which was one of the first to open, open all day serving food and drinks and always a very lively place. Things are mostly all open now and it's starting to get quite busy and some of the restaurants are really buzzing, which is nice to see. This is the side street running from Cantanti to Cali del Fin, and as you can see, it's really, really rocking tonight. All the bars are full, which is fantastic. And now we're back in Cali Iglesia at my favourite restaurant, Tapas Oscar. It's always really busy, usually full of Spanish people as well as tourists, and it has a great varied menu at really reasonable prices. Don't forget to book, it's always really busy. Oh, and I almost forgot I said I'd tell you about the dentist. 
This guy is at the bottom end of the main strip on the left in a small shopping centre upstairs on the first floor. He's a great dentist, speaks English, very professional and good prices.